Hello friends and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this custom 112 scale James Bond that I made. I just finished this guy up and wanted to do a showcase video for it. Along with him we've got my 110 scale RC Aston Martin. I believe this is a Vantage. Um, I, in fact, it is because it says it on the license plate. Um, <laughs> I I don't know who makes this. I got it off eBay several years ago, and the seller didn't know. I thought it was a Raystar or Rastar, um, which is an RC car company, but I, I don't think it is because they make one that has an interior and the doors open, and this one is like the shell that does not. The The camera kind of obscures it, but it, it actually like scales with this figure perfectly. He looks a little big next to it on, on camera just from the angle, but um, it's it's like a perfect uh, scale with this figure. So let's take a look at Bond here. Now this is a head that I got on eBay from a seller in China. This is the best Bond head in this scale that I've seen. And what I did was I painted it. So it came in this like kind of dark pink color. I painted it and then I added hair to it. I'll I'll get into how I did the hair in a minute, but I wanted to show you the figure first. So this is on a Noda Toys or Noda Nada Studio. I don't know how it's pronounced. A Logan body. So this was a Wolverine figure, essentially. A third party, you know, un unlicensed Wolverine. And he had a belt and a regular tie. And the collar was unbuttoned at the top there. And so... What I did was I I sewed the collar shut and I removed the belt and then the shoes, you know, he had these like kind of dingy, dirty looking shoes on. Uh, these are, I was trying to figure out what the best shoes to use would be. These are the like Noda shoes that their suited body figures come with. These are nice, but they're not like tuxedo shoes and I wanted him to have tuxedo shoes. So what I ended up using was the feet from my Mezco Captain Kirk that I just bought for parts because I, I got a good deal on one and I'm not a Star Trek guy so I was like yeah that'll be perfect I can use the body for something and hands for something etc so these are the shoes off the Captain Kirk and they're you know they're kind of pointy and they got a nice patent leather look to them so they were perfect for the tuxedo shoes the bow tie is made out of this nylon material it's like stretchy kind of elastic type of stuff this was like the belt that came on like a samurai outfit that I got from GPS lot. And what I ended up doing was, you can see one of my trial runs here, I tied a knot in it and then I cut the ends off. And because this stuff is synthetic, if you introduce heat to it, it shrinks up. So I, you can see how the, the end gets kind of singed like that. I just took a lighter to it and just kind of barely kissed it with the lighter flame and that shrunk the ends to give me the, this nice kind of finished look on them. I'm gonna move the car so we can see the figure a little bit better. Now onto the hair. The head sculpt had like hair sculpted in, right? You can actually see kind of in the front there, the way it forms that little bump in the front. This was the hair more like what he had in Skyfall where it's like shorter and, and has a part and is more combed. And I wanted to do a specifically a Casino Royale version of Bond in the black tux with the with the dark colored Aston Martin. What I decided to do, I made a, a custom Mezco Thor figure a while back. Uh, my homie Dean the Collector picked it up from me. Uh, it's one of the few that I made to that I was willing to part with because usually I make these for my collection, but I don't have like a Mezco Marvel collection, so I was like, you know, this one's up for sale and. And so my homie Dean bought it. You can check out his review over on his channel, Dean the Collector. Wonderful guy, really enthusiastic. Uh, I made a couple different heads for that Thor. Uh, and I used a Ragnarok Mezco Thor as the base. And so I took the helmeted head and I, I removed the helmet and I put hair underneath it so that his hair was actually coming out from under the helmet. And then I also did a version where I used the sculpted hair from like a, a Marvel Legends Thor for the top part where it pulls into the ponytail and then I made soft hair coming out the bottom. So I had some of that left over. And what I did for the hair is I took what was like string fibers, you know, threads from one of my dog's toys. My dog, you know, I have a dog who likes to tear up toys. And so there's always these thread bits laying around and, and you know, 
as I am wont to do, I was like, you know, I'll use that for something. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I kept it out of the trash and I, you know, I took some that weren't slobbered on and, you know, there were these nice soft strands and I just painted them like a blonde color. And so I had some left over and I've been cutting hair for over 20 years now. I just learned when I was in high school because uh, my mom couldn't afford to get me haircuts as often as I want. So she just bought a set of clippers and was like, figure it out. <laughs> so, you know, and then I actually, my first job was in a barber shop, like sweeping up hair and stuff. So I, I learned how to cut hair at a very young age and I still cut my own to this day. Uh, I used to do all my friends' haircuts and stuff. So I have a, a pretty good handle on like cutting hair and, and how to achieve certain looks with hair. And so that really played a factor here because, you know, I sort of, knew what I was trying to do and, and how to kind of taper it down. Let me get him in a little closer here. Now, the, the one thing about this figure that kind of sucks is that the, the note of uh, bodies, they're just really dark. And I didn't want to paint the neck because you end up getting like paint chips and stuff and paint rub. And because the collar is pretty high and, you know, you're only going to see him from the front, I left it as is. I might swap the neck at some point with something else. But uh, for now, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with how it looks. And I just like, you know what, that's... A concession I'm willing to make. So what I did was I glued the hair on like little chunks at a time to kind of achieve this this sort of like forward directional look and then I did the same thing going down the sides and then so the straggly bits that were kind of hanging off I took some really tiny scissors and just snipped them very much like a haircut and kind of gave it this not quite a fade look but a tapered look where it gets shorter as it goes down. So that's how I ended up with that, and uh, I think it really just takes this figure to another level and really gives him the more Casino Royale look. Because um, his hair was longer in Casino Royale and in Quantum than it was in Skyfall and the, the subsequent two movies. The watch is a Secret Agent Gomez watch. That's another figure that, you know, I don't collect the Gomez's, the Gomai. I don't know what the plural is for that. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I picked one up for really cheap on Mercari a couple years ago because the guy had he, had, he had done some customization stuff to it. And this guy would just kind of sell stuff cheap anyway, which was awesome because I would, I've bought a bunch of stuff from this guy. Anyway, um, so I have, you know, a Secret Agent Gomez that I've been using parts from for a while now. And I was saving the watch because I knew one day I'd do a Bond figure. And so I took that watch and I painted it silver with a Molotow chrome pen. And, uh, you know, just put it on the wrist, pegged it on there, and it was good to go. The The watch was a little bit big, so I had to trim it down uh, and re-glue it so that it wouldn't, like, hang off his wrist. Like, you know when you're in middle school and you get a grown-up watch <laughs> and you're wearing it, it's hanging off your little little kid wrists. Anyway, so um, that is, that's Bond. It was a pretty simple custom in the construction of it. It was just a, a real pain to, like, paint the head and do the hair and stuff. That's the thing that always holds me back with customs. Like I have a bunch, let me show you actually. I'm working on a, a Dark Knight trilogy set and I finally started painting all these heads yesterday and Bond I did as well at the same time. So uh, the way I paint heads, I actually have a tutorial up for my, a Joker head that I painted. So you can see the way I do it. You know, I don't just do like a single skin tone and then hair and then call it good. You can see the, the layering process in these. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll flick paint on it to get this real skin-like look to it, you know, kind of blotched and mottled. Um, and then I'll do the hair in layers. So right now this just has a, a brown wash on it. And what that does is gets the dark, the brown down in these crevices. And then eventually I'll go over this with a blonde color over just the raised parts and so the hair will have a lot of depth because it'll have those those dark crevices and then the lighter parts and it just adds to the the depth and realism of it. Here's another one, Officer John Blake. Um, this one is is getting pretty close to being done. I've got all the skin texture stuff down. I just need to do the hair and the eyes and the eyebrows now. Head sculpts are the one thing that really keeps me from completing customs because, you know, I'll, I'll put the body together and then I'll have the head and I'll just be like, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to paint this thing. Um, Alfred, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how he's turning out. Uh, I gave him a little more of like the old man kind of splotchiness to the skin. I don't know how well it picks up here on, on this camera, but uh, to the naked eye, it's pretty apparent. 
So yeah, working on painting heads really is uh, the bane of my making custom figures. But anyway, so yeah, that's Bond. I do have a Walther for him. This came with a, I, I bought the like 11 Studios Mafex scale Bond head sculpt. It's just absolutely fantastic. It's the best Bond sculpt in any scale. They did one for six scale as well. Um, and then thankfully they did a, a, a run on a tiny one. So I, I have that, which you can see in my YouTube short where he's sitting on the silver Mercedes that kind of looks like an Aston Martin DB5. Um, so he came with a, a, a Walther. And so I used the Walther for that because I already had one from my like DID corporation, no time to die bond. So still figuring out how I want to display this guy. I, I had him like this where he was like buttoning his suit jacket, which looked super dope. But uh, there's there's all kinds of different ways to do it. But this is going to go on my shelves that have like the, the character and the car that they go with. So I do plan to make a Casino Royale hotel backdrop with like a, you know, sort of the parking lot. Like if you remember in the movie when he when he first arrives at the hotel and and checks in they give him an envelope with his gun and he goes out and you know there's keys in it and he goes out and finds the Aston Martin in the parking lot um so I want to have that as the background for this so I'll be doing a diorama for that eventually and I'll, I'll make a video of that as well but let's take a look at the car here so again this was an eBay find uh it's not in the greatest shape I mean it's it's in it's in pretty good shape but you can probably see it's got a few little scuffs and scratches here and there but I haven't really had to do anything to this, which was nice. I did paint the wheels. They were previously like a, just an ugly kind of chrome, like a fake chrome looking color. And so I took a dark metallic, same paint I used to, to make John Wick's Mustang. And I just taped off the tires and then sprayed the wheels. And so they look a lot better now. Um, this thing does work, but I don't run it as an RC car because you know I, I buy them for customization and, and display. But yeah, I mean, it's a it's a pretty faithful representation of an Aston Martin, which is, you know, it's a beautiful car. But uh, yeah, so very excited. You know, I'm a huge Bond fan. I've written and drawn James Bond comics, like the official ones. Very into espionage in general. Uh, at the beginning of this video, you will have seen a trailer for my new book, Retroactive, which is kind of like uh, James Bond meets Groundhog Day. So please be sure to check out that book. It's available on Amazon or, you know, at local bookstores and comic shops. If you enjoy seeing custom figures like this, please be sure to like, comment, and uh, subscribe. Let me know what your favorite James Bond is, your favorite James Bond movie. I am I think Daniel Craig is the best James Bond, but my personal favorite James Bond is Timothy Dalton, which is becoming a less controversial take these days, which is nice because people are starting to realize, like, he was a perfect Bond and his movies were actually pretty good. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep your head on swivel.